Another probability approximation that's very useful is replacing the binomial distribution by the normal distribution. So we have the normal approximation to the binomial. And this is valid when the number of experiments in the binomial is large, but the probability is round about a half, not too extreme, not very unlikely each time to get a success and not very likely, roughly a half. There's no absolutes here, 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 would be fine, um, and the bigger that n is, the further away you can get from a half. But in these cases, we then use the mean is NP, and the standard deviation for a binomial is the square root of NP times 1 minus P. And we can use those parameters, that mean and that standard deviation, to go to a normal distribution rather than the binomial. And again, it will be an approximation, but it will be fairly accurate as long as the conditions are fulfilled. So let's look at an example. Let's toss a hundred coins, where in fact p is exactly equal to a half for each coin, and find the probability that the number of heads is between 45 and 55. And we mean strictly between, above 45, so anything from 46 to 54. Now we could do this exactly, we'd have to find the probability of 46, the probability of 47 and 48 and so on. Each of those is a slightly complicated calculation, but the problem is we've got to do lots of them. There's um, about 10 of them here from 46 to 54 inclusive, and it would be very tedious. So what we do instead is replace this by the normal distribution, and it works as follows. We uh, do the conversion we've had before. Well, let's, let's first of all write down what the mean is. 100 times a half, the mean is 50, and the standard deviation is the square root of 50 times a half, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. So what we have here is a normal distribution with a mean of 50, and a standard deviation of 5. And we want to be above 45 and below 50. Now we have a little bit of an issue to uh, mention. The binomial is a discrete distribution. You either have 45 or 46. The normal distribution is continuous. 45, 45.1, 0 0.2, and in fact every decimal in between. So what we have to realise is that 45 heads actually corresponds on this scale to anything from 44.5 to 45.5. All of that is 45. So if we want to be bigger than 45, we must start at the top end of that particular block. That's the 45s we need to start at the top. And similarly, if we want to be less than 55, 55 spans anything from 54.5 to 55.5, and we want to be less than that. So we need to be this area here. This is called the continuity correction. And it's because we're going from a discrete variable, 45, 46, 47, to a continuous variable. In many cases, it won't make a great deal of difference if you put the 0.5 on or not, but we'll do it uh, to be as accurate as possible. So we want, in fact, our number of heads, x now, has to be between 45.5 and 
54.5. So we convert to our standard normal uh, variable z by subtracting the mean, dividing by the standard deviation. So I do 45.5 take away 50, divide by 5, less than z, less than 54.5 minus 50 divided by 5. That gives me minus 4.5 over 5. So that's the probability of minus 0.9 is less than z, and this is plus 0.9. So I've now reduced it to an exercise in using the standard normal distribution tables, and if I look these up, it comes in at point. 6318, just over 63 percent. So the chance of getting from 46 to 54 heads when I toss 100 coins is about 63 percent. The exact answer would be very similar, this is a very good approximation, but it would take an inordinate amount of time to calculate doing uh, nine separate binomial calculations. So this approximation is a very useful one as long as the probability p each time is quite near a half. Okay, Marie, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.